Hi everyone, welcome to Lead Code Biweekly 133. It's been such a long time since I've done a contest that I'm not sure how to. Okay, there's two equal problems again. Uh, they're not the same, okay. Uh, inversions, number of permutations such that 0 to n i has count by inversions. Hmm, this seems interesting. This seems, oh, it's up to 300, okay. I was thinking this seemed kind of hard, but... Okay. Uh, it still doesn't seem that easy though. Hmm. There's at least one with n that equals to n take one. Okay. Mm. Mm. I'm just going to do something stupid. I think I could do so something similar to. Uh, I guess like inversion so far. Oh no, I guess inversion. So, okay, so if I guess must puzzle and not even find any. Let's return. And then here, yeah, if position is equal to I think one, then we return one. Otherwise, um, the number of inversions could uh, increase up to uh, it could be anywhere from zero to I guess the index plus one. Uh, Unfortunately, this is n squared, but let's just, uh, I'm not going to submit this, obviously, but let's just make sure this ACs. 2, 1, 1. Okay, now I'm going to optimize this a bit. So, okay, so now we're going to have like two things, I guess. Uh, okay, my answer. Uh, position in the so if this is equal to four one we turn zero okay so we can do this uh like this and then here I can go return this f plus plus one and f minus one and it's plus uh, plus two uh, something like something like this Two one one, okay.
So this one is choose any index and flip from i to the end of the array. This one is choose three any three consecutive elements. Okay, let's just do this one first. I nums, I guess if I mod current is equal to zero, we go across. And yeah, isn't this like kind of too easy? Like this seems way easier than, okay. Okay, so for I range, X numbers to two. Uh, we can copy paste this. Here. Three negative one. Uh, some I am mod three not equal to zero. Num is three zero. Okay, let's just submit. AC, 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 AC. Okay, good. We AC'd all four problems. Um, it's only been seven minutes, so I'm not sure whether I won yet. But anyway, I'll go. I'll discuss the answers. Okay, in this question, um, if a number's a multiple three already, you don't need to do anything. And if it's not a multiple three, then you always need one operation because if it's one more than a multiple three, you can just subtract one. And if it's and otherwise, the only remaining case is it's uh, one less than a multiple three, and then you can just add one. So that we just count the number of elements which are not multiples of three. This question is like questions two and question three basically have the same idea. It's just we go through left to right and we flip um, an element if we need to. And in fact, there's kind of only what there's actually only one unique solution for both problems. Uh, assuming that obviously you would never do the same operation on the same indices to, like more than once because then that would just cancel out and so if you restrict yourself to only flipping once on each subarray it turns out that there's at most one solution to even do this and in this question we just go left to right and like it, we go left to right and if the first element is zero then we need to flip this these three arrays and we have no choice and once we flip this first element, say, so we get like one zero zero. Now we see the second element, it's a zero again. So in, so in order to flip the zero, we don't want to flip, we can't flip like any previous one because that would mess up all of the progress we've done to the left, which means the only one we could flip is this current one, the separate starting is zero. So we flip this. So essentially you go left to right. And whenever you see the zero, you try to flip the three elements. And sometimes, are uh, it's not possible and you'll get some zeros remaining like if if you've done this procedure and the last two elements if either of them is zero then it's impossible and uh, we return negative one this question is also very similar we just <laughs> go left to right and if we need to flip it if we need uh to flip the if the current element is zero then we just need to perform an operation importantly you don't actually go through the array and flip every element like i actually have one redundant variable here but like uh Like I, I could do it like this, for example. Uh, this might be easy to explain. Yeah, so res is just the answer. And the idea is you can get the current element and the current element will be the original element. And if we've performed an odd number of flips so far, i.e. res mod two, then this number will be flipped again. So, uh, 
for example, like uh, for this first one, this is a zero. So we need to perform a flip. So res becomes one because we increment one. Now when we see the sec when we see the second element, it used to be in one, and since we've performed an odd number flip so far, it must currently be a zero, which means that we need to perform this operation. So yeah, that's why the current answer tells can give us the current element without actually needing to go through it and flip every element. Now finally this Finally, there's this question. Um, importantly, like the number of inversions can be at most 400 be, uh, under these two constraints, which means that a uh, solution of the time complexity n times the number of inversions or n times 400 is sufficient. Um, here's my DP state. Well, this, this must array is just like, if must at index i is not equal to negative one, then it means we must have this number of um, inversions. My DP state so far is we have uh, an index pos and some number inv, and my DP state is fine as like, I guess the number of solutions where, uh, where the array, I, or I guess where the permutation, or I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna call it, okay, permutations, where the number of permutations up to this position is equal to invert is equal to i and v. Uh, so this is this is like an inclusive index. So it's of all indices up to position pos, the number of inversions should be should be exactly equal to inv. And this is my condition. So the base case here, some base cases like uh, if there's a requirement for this position and we don't meet that requirement, then there's zero solutions. If we reach the end of the array, there's one solution. Otherwise, um, here's where it gets inter yeah. Uh, here's where it gets interesting. It's what I had before. Um, it, the answer here is actually equal to answer uh, inverse plus answer. Uh, this is the correct formulation. Like This is the actual answer. Why? Well, we basically need to, yeah, we want to transition to the next layer, to the next position, which means we kind of need to we need to decide which element to put for this next position. And uh, there's kind of like, uh, there's a neat idea. It's instead of choosing, you don't want to actually choose each element. Um, like when we go left to right, we're basically deciding which number to put in that spot from left to right. But the idea is we don't actually want to choose its final value. We only want to maintain the order of the prefix that we've done so far. So even like even if in our final array, uh, our permutation has two at the start, um, if we only consider this prefix, uh, we, we will just consider this zero. Um, okay, so it's really hard to describe, but essentially you, you don't want to fix an element. You only care about the you only care about the um, the order of these first few elements, like the relative order between them, and you don't care about all of the other elements. So instead of choosing, like, instead of choosing uh, for your next element, instead of choosing exactly what value to give it, you only need to choose where to put it relative to the elements we've chosen so far. And that means, for example, if if position is equal to one, and let's say our relative order looks like one zero, which means that our first element is larger than the second element. When we consider this third element, I'm not choosing whether to give it zero, one, two, three, four in our final value. I only care whether it's going to be greater than both of these ones, less than both of these ones, or in the middle of them. And so for example, if I decided that this element should be in the middle of them, then in fact, the relative order would really become this. And the idea is that once you've inserted all n elements, the relative order will become exactly the same as the permutations. So in fact, when we say number of solutions, what we really care is about number of relative orderings. And why is this helpful? Is because when we're trying to expand this prefix by putting in one more element, um, the number of like values you can take is exactly equal to this length plus one, because it could be less than all of them, or it can be greater than exactly one of them, or greater than exactly two of them, all the way up to greater than all of them. And that's where we get this uh, condition. Because if we, for example, if we put, if we choose our element to be greater than all of the elements we've chosen so far, i.e. last in the relative ordering, then the number of inversions won't change. 
If we choose it to be smaller than uh, only one of these elements, the inversions will increase by one. And all the way up to if we choose our current element to be smaller than everything before it, uh, the number of inversions will increase by position plus one. So this is actually the transition. And if you implement this naively, it's like n squared times 400, which is not good enough. But what we can notice is for this transition is um, these all have like the same pos plus one, and then the second argument forms a continuous range. So I have another function here, f, which like f plus inverse is just it's, it's just like a uh, it's just uh, like a it's, it's like a suffix sum really. Uh, so it's just the sum of all these terms all the way up to answer position four hundred. And this is really easy. Like if the if this inverse is greater than four hundred, the sum is empty. Otherwise, you just get this value and add it onto the, I guess, the remaining suffix sum. So this is pretty straightforward. But the key idea is now we can represent this uh, sum because notice that the second terms are range. So we can do something similar to prefix sums. Now it's just the difference of these two cumulative sums. And that gives us our answer in uh, a transition time of order one instead of before we had order n. So now it's order one. And yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, it's been 60 minutes. Let's go check the leaderboard. Okay, nice. So I won the US one by over a minute and a half. I'm just going to go check the China site. So I had 701. And the, oh, someone beat me 628. Okay, second place. Not bad, not bad. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys probably in two weeks because the weekly contests are a terrible time for me, so I can't really do a weekly contest. But I'll probably do the next bi-weekly in two weeks. Alright, see ya.